It's me. It's been quite a while. Today is the 17th of June, Monday, and I decided to film a vlog because I haven't done that since I did the 24 and 48 reading challenge and I've missed doing it. Not to mention that as always, I'm a little behind on my reading while at the same time I'm reading a few very interesting books at the same time and I thought it would be fun to include them in a reading vlog. Now, where have I been? I've been out of town for about 10 days. I went to this board game villa gathering thing that we did with a group of, I don't want to call them friends because out of the 18 people there I only knew three of them but I'm happy to say that by the end I had such a great time and managed to meet some fantastic people, have some fantastic conversation, both about board games and books. I played some very interesting board games and generally had one very nice relaxing weekend. After that, I went to spend some time with my family and yesterday I arrived back here. As I mentioned, it is Monday, it is about 11.30 and I've already been to the gym and took a shower and did some work on my computer. I do have quite a few things to handle on my computer later on. I also need to go to the library at some point and return a book, but for now let's talk about the books that I'm currently reading and then we'll make a plan of sorts for this vlog. As I mentioned, I'm in the middle of reading a few very interesting books, the first of which is Stone of Farewell by Tad Williams. This is an adult classic epic fantasy and the second book in the Memory, Sorrow and Thorn series, which I absolutely love the first book of it and I am, what, 120 pages into this one and while I'm very much enjoying it, I have to say that Tad Williams likes to take his time with every single scene. I don't think there's ever been been a scene that he didn't squeeze everything out of and while that makes for some very thorough storytelling it can also be grating for some people especially if you're not in the mood for taking your time with the story so far i'm enjoying it very much because i'm in such a mood but i wanted to give that as a um, sort of a disclaimer because i'm singing the praises of this series very often and i think this is an important thing to keep in mind because it's so very different from the more modern fantasy that tends to move through scenes much more quicker then the second book that I'm reading is a ballad for Georg Hennig by Viktor Paskov, which is either a historical fiction or a memoir. I'm not 100% sure. I need to research this a little further, but so far I'm enjoying this story so much. I know it's supposed to be sad and it's gonna get sadder as we go. I can just feel it, but for the moment I'm smiling way more than anything else. It is a very quiet and at the same time powerful story, at least for the moment. We'll see how it goes. I am enjoying it very, very much. And the last book that I'm currently reading is Into the Wild by John Krakauer. This is a nonfiction and is a recounting of the disappearance of Chris McCandles, which happened back in 1992, and it was a big sensation at the time. I'm about 50 pages into it, and so far I already have a lot of thoughts about the book itself and a lot of contradicting feelings when it comes to the person Chris McCandles, which I will discuss a little bit later because this clip has already gone a little bit too long. Now, besides those three books that I'm reading, I have already completed three other books in the month of June, but one of them wasn't even on my TBR. And on top of that, I have five more to read before the month is over, which is going to be a struggle. But when is it not? Either way, I'm having a good time with these books. Now I'm going to go on the balcony and do some reading, after which I'm going to work on my computer for a little bit because, as I mentioned, I have a lot of things to handle there. And then later on, maybe we can go to the park and do some more reading there because the weather is very hot, but it's always nicer under the trees and I am boiling in this apartment. After which, who knows? Okay, here's the thing. I was supposed to be reading this as an audiobook and I started it in that format, but I decided to continue with the physical copy because of the format of the book itself. It's written in a very nice way where every single chapter starts with at least one quote from one of the favorite books of the guy that disappeared and is the subject of this story. And then it continues as a mixture of the writing of the author himself and some of the statements given by people who have met Chris McCandles where they recount how their interactions went, as well as some journal entries by Chris candles himself and while the voice actor made it very clear which is which I still think for me at least it's better to read it in the physical form as I mentioned earlier while I do enjoy the book very much I feel a little conflicted as to how I feel about the guy who is the subject of this story because while the story evokes a lot of empathy and sense of wonder as well a sense of sorrow because you know how the story ends he is found dead I find myself a little exasperated with the lack of common sense because you can see in this story how he idolizes works of fiction and 
takes them as sort of instructional manuals as to how to live your life. And while I think it's very important that we take inspiration from works of fiction and maybe reinforce our values and morals through them, take solace, find peace, it is very important to remember that those are for the most part not an accurate representation of real life and inform our decisions based on common sense, which I do believe is very much lacking in this young man despite everything that people say about him that he had a lot of it his decisions and the steps that he took very much contradict that statement not to mention that he comes from a wealthy family and i have noticed something about people who tend to romanticize poor life or life of great lacking it usually comes from people who have not experienced that in their younger years who have had things provided for them which is not a bad thing if your parents can provide for you that is a great thing i don't think you should feel guilty about it it is simply very important to remember that poverty and struggle for survival are only romantic and adventurous when you read about them from the comfort of your home whilst having food and roof over your head provided take those things away and this sort of struggle is no longer exciting or adventurous it becomes simply scary anyway i am enjoying the story very much so far and while my feelings on the philosophy behind the actions taken by chris mccandles are a little conflicting for the moment i think the author did a very good job in staying neutral on his personal opinion and just recounting the facts and the feelings of the people who actually met the guy. I also know there is a movie based on this book and I've heard great things about it so as soon as I'm done reading it I think I'm gonna attempt to watch it. For now I'm gonna put this one down and move on to Stone of Farewell by Tad Williams because I feel a little bit in the mood of epic fantasy. I do like to switch reads every now and then. I'm gonna do some more reading for probably another hour after which I'm gonna figure out lunch, do some more work and when the temperature starts to go down a little bit around probably 5 6 p.m. I'm gonna try to go out for a little bit of a walk and maybe read in the park. We'll see. Right, it is about 6 p.m. right now and I've been out for a walk for about an hour and I think I'm gonna find a spot and sit down to read a little bit outside because the weather is quite cool at the moment which is such a lovely difference from earlier in the day. I did quite a lot today which I didn't film most of it because it was gonna be boring for a video. I also spent two hours on a phone call with a friend of mine whom I absolutely love but it ended up being a little bit exhausting because we spent most of that time talking about work and about strategies that she could employ to fulfill one of her projects let's put it that way. I think we managed to come up with some good ideas and I'm really excited to see what she's gonna do. After that I continued doing a little bit of my work and at some point I just felt so stifled in this apartment and I went out for a walk and as I mentioned it ended up being quite a nice experience. So now we're gonna go find a spot, sit down and do a little bit of reading. All right, it's a few hours later and I'm back home and I didn't update you on my reading earlier because, well, the book that I ended up reading is Ballad for Georg Hennig by Viktor Paskov. And um, you remember how I mentioned that it hadn't made me cry, but I was expecting it to get very sad. Well, it did get quite sad quite quickly. And while it didn't remain that way for the whole time, there's a lot of humor interjected in the story. Dark humor for the most part, but I did find it quite amusing. Still, it did hit me at a quite particular spot and it got me to be quite emotional. So I wanted to calm down properly before I came on camera and talked about the story. I do believe this to be a sort of an autobiography, even though it's technically named and supposedly focusing on another person. Still, the author is telling the story of his childhood, but now reflected through his grown-up eyes, so to speak. I found quite of the personal experiences here quite relatable, even though I have lived admittedly very different life than this author, and in a very different time period. But there is something about this story that is just so personal, and you kind of feel like you're living those things with this child 
child and I am just so happy I am reading this. Besides this one, I reached page 62 and Into the Wild and also enjoying this one very much and I think I reached page 240 in Stone of Farewell by Tad Williams. I'm too lazy to go get it from the inside. I am enjoying the story very much even though as I mentioned earlier it's quite dense and it got me to thinking that I really wish I could read a horror story written by Tad Williams because he has this amazing ability to describe things in a very creepy way to create this atmosphere of fear and frightful anticipation and I'm really enjoying those scenes in his books. Sometimes I feel as though I can hear the background scary music when I'm reading these. It's really really fun. So that's my reading for the day so far and I think I'm gonna continue reading a little bit later but for now I'm gonna go back inside and work on my computer because I'm helping a friend of mine with a project, a different friend, not the one that I talked about earlier and I'll update you a little bit later. It is about 9 30 and I am still reading the same book I was reading earlier and I think this is gonna be my last update for the evening because reading this is getting me very very emotional and you know how some books hit you harder than others not because the words in them are extraordinarily sad although they are in this particular case but more so because what those words mean to you how you relate them to the things that you've been through or the people that you've known and what they've been through so I'm gonna continue reading this for a while longer maybe finish it tonight maybe not I don't know I have to read it in smaller increments because I like to stop and think about what I read but I will update you with more information tomorrow morning when I'm in a better condition to do so It is now Tuesday about 8 a.m. and I've been awake for about an hour and a half at this point because I just can't sleep. It is so hot and you might ask, Sylvia, why don't you use your air conditioner? That is a great question that I don't have a legitimate answer to as of right now. Regardless, it is already way above 25 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit and it's going to be yet another very, very hot day and I really need to get out of the apartment today because I have things to do. As I mentioned yesterday, I have to return a book to the library, but that's not the most important thing. I have a meeting with a friend later on and before that, I have to go do some administrative stuff very likely. I was even thinking of going and working from a cafe today, but I don't know if I have the energy for that. I have to pack a bunch of stuff and it's just I am so exhausted I haven't slept properly in quite a few days again because of the high temperatures so maybe I'm gonna try using the aircon tonight even though I don't necessarily enjoy sleeping with that thing on maybe I just haven't found the right temperature balance we'll see it's not that big of a deal what I did last night is I did not read any more from the book I actually went and did some work on my computer until rather late I would say which is yet another thing that contributes to my lack of energy today but we're not gonna let this day take us down we're gonna make the best of it so I'm gonna drink my coffee now start editing this vlog and then I'm gonna go do some reading and then I'm gonna head out and do all the things that I need to do today So I was answering some YouTube comments that I've been meaning to answer for a few weeks now and I ran into an email from a gentleman whom I'm assuming prompted by my lack of timely response decided to send some criticism my way and more specifically on the way that I run my channel. I already sent him what I consider to be a very polite response but I thought I'd address some of those criticisms here as well because maybe he's not the only one who feels this way and I want to make sure that we're all clear here. His first criticism was related to my speed of responding itself and I'm gonna paraphrase here because I don't have have the message right in front of me but what he said was basically if you don't want to talk to people don't ask them to leave comments and that obviously in the general case is a valid thing to say but I think we need to take into consideration the circumstances here when I ask you to leave me a comment it's really because I want to talk to you I don't know if you've noticed but I almost never ask you to subscribe or like the videos and it's not because there's anything wrong with doing that it's not because I don't want you to do it or that I don't appreciate it but because that's not what's the most important thing to me I made this YouTube channel 
channel because I wanted to talk to people about books and obviously by the nature of it, I'm gonna be the one that does most of the talking, but I would like to have a dialogue. It's why I ask you to leave me comments and it's why I try to respond to them as quickly as I can. But I don't wanna give you a pro forma response. I wanna make sure that I took the time to read every single comment, thought about it, and then whatever I write back is gonna be my well-considered thoughts. Now, that doesn't mean that it's always gonna be something profound or spectacular, but it's gonna be genuine and born out of consideration, not just a throwaway thought to get rid of an item on my checklist. However, I do have a life out of YouTube. Things happen to me. I don't always have the best day or enough energy to sit and read and consider and pay attention. Sometimes it takes me longer to read and respond to the comments, but I always read and respond to every single one of them. So if you happen to be dissatisfied with my speed of responding, you have my apologies. However, you need to remember that we have no service level agreement here. I am not obligated to respond to you in any sort of timely manner. I am trying though, and I can guarantee you that whenever you get the response from me, it's going to be specially for you because I want us to have a dialogue and not just hurl random thoughts at each other. Now that's point number one, and there were two more points, and I'm going to try to address them as quickly as possible. The second one was that I don't read current enough books and that I should try to read newer books to be more relevant. That generally is a good advice if you're trying to grow your channel, I'm assuming. However, I didn't make this channel for the sole purpose of growing it or to be necessarily always relevant. You probably don't know this about me, but even though I'm an avid reader, I spent nearly 10 years of my life reading almost nothing. And as such, I have missed out on a lot of great books. Now, being that my life, just like everyone else's, is finite and I'm not going to be able to read all the books in the world, as well as the fact that I don't just read to be a booktuber or to be relevant, I am trying to make sure that I read the books that I want to read, the books that are important to me, the books that I think might be important to me, the books that I think I might like. And there are going to be a lot of backlisted books among those. If you are looking for the newest books and the current trending topics in the reading community, then there are a lot of other great booktubers that do that. I will link some of them in the video description if that is something you're interested in, but that's not something that I can offer you. And I think it's important that you know that when you come here so that we don't have any sort of misunderstanding. And then the last point that the gentleman made was that I rate the books that I read too high. I actually went through my reading journal and he's not technically wrong because I have rated the vast majority of the books that I've read four stars. But to that, I will answer with something that I said just a minute ago. For the most part, I actively try to read the books that I think I'm gonna like and I know myself quite well at this age already, so I usually end up being right. Now there's obviously the fact that we all rate books differently and we all appreciate books in a different way, but I actually have a formula that I utilize to rate every single one of them. So I try to be as objective as I can. Obviously, I can be fully objective because I'm not an object, I'm a subject and we're all subjective. Now, I don't know why something like this would be annoying to someone, but if that happens to be the case, then that is something that you need to examine for yourself. I can only tell you that I stand firmly behind every single rating that I'm giving. And that is the end of this. I hope that clarified some things for you and I hope it wasn't too preachy. Now let's get out of the house and get to the library. It is now 4.30, I've just been to the library and returned the book. I didn't pick up any new ones because I have plenty of books to read at home. And now I'm in a bit of a dilemma because I have a meeting with a friend of mine at 6.30 around the city center and I live towards the northern end of the city, which means that if I go home now, I'm gonna have to go back in about an hour. So I'm thinking I might go to a coffee place and do a little bit of reading and a little bit of work. That's probably the best decision. It is 10 minutes later and I just realized that I haven't eaten anything today. So I'm gonna go find a place where I can do that and work at the same time. After that, I met my friend and we had a very nice evening and I even forgot to film the closing clip for this vlog. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye.